Well, back on Friday, members of our better team headed to beautiful Scotland, Scotland. Connecticut, home to one of the state's newest wineries. The vineyard at Hillyland is just over two years old. It opened in March of 2017 on land that was once home to a dairy farm. Take a look. So my wife and I, uh, we had been doing the Connecticut Passport program, going to other vineyards and, you know, trying wine. It was something that we enjoyed doing. And uh, back in 2003, we went on a couple overnight trip out to New York to the Hudson uh, River Valley. And there's the Hudson Valley Wine Trail out there. And so we were checking out the vineyards on that trail and several of them were old dairy farms. So my wife said to me, as we were at one of them tasting wine, she said, why are we still milking cows? <laughs> Doug and Jerry Stearns planted their first vines in 2007. They started with an acre. The next year we planted another acre, and the next year about two and a half acres. And then we started making some small batches of wine, trying things out, selling most of the grapes to other vineyards. Realizing the dairy business was no longer financially feasible for their farm or their family, they changed their focus to the wine business. We milked cows here from 1970 till 2009 and at that point it just uh, wasn't working out for us economically and we decided to uh, get out of the dairy business and we had already started the uh, vineyard at that point. Each year we increased what we made for wine and eventually stopped selling grapes and 2017 we opened up the, the winery and the tasting room. Doug, who in the transition from dairy to wine had the financial safety net of income from his job as an attorney, says they've learned lessons along the way. We had tried initially some Chardonnay and some Cab Franc grapes. Um, and after a few years of just not getting anything significant to make wine with, we pulled those out and we put in um, a variety called Prairie Star, which uh, I think we're the only ones in Connecticut growing that right now, but it makes a very popular wine. Prairie Star grapes are one of the nine varieties grown here. There are four reds and five whites. So the grapes that we have, the reds are Frontenac, St. Croix, Leon Malo and Marichal Foch. And the whites are Cayuga White, Saval Blanc, Traminette, uh, Prairie Star, and Vignoles. This time of year, the grapes don't look like grapes. Not yet. So that's the, that's the developing cluster. And so that's all those, these are all gonna turn into grapes. They won't be ready for harvest until the fall. Come September is when we start the harvest. And uh, so we, you, you pick one variety each day that you're harvesting. They all come at different times. So the whites, we pick them and crush them. And then the next day we press them and start the fermentation process. You put the juice into a, a tank and start the fermentation process. The reds go through a more extended fermentation process. You ferment them on the skins because you're trying to get the color out of them. It's a, it's a lot of work during, during harvest to you know, pick. We probably pick between 32,000, 34,000 pounds of grapes. And uh, so those are, those are long days, you know, picking and crushing and then, you know, doing the pressing. Initially, the crushing and pressing and fermenting was done in the farm's big, beautiful old dairy barn. A picture of that barn is actually on the label of the Hilly Land wine. But just four months after opening the vineyard, there was a devastating fire. Our family was here having a 4th of July picnic and it was about four o'clock in the afternoon we were bringing some things back in the house and my son heard some crackling and he, he looked up and the barn was on fire. Crews couldn't get there fast enough to save the majority of the building. Basically a total loss by the time it was over that day. To lose the barn they loved so much was gut-wrenching. You know, it just meant a lot to us. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but their winemaking operation was impacted. He lost about 6,000 gallons of wine. Still, just two days after the fire, the tasting room was open. It was a very, uh, very heartwarming experience. Uh, you know, a lot of townspeople and friends and family came out that night. And, uh, yeah, we felt lucky at that point. 
The plan is to build another building on the site to house the winery, and they plan to incorporate the rock facade that was left standing. We've talked about having a banquet facility as part of what we rebuild. For now, the wine is being fermented in a temporary location on the property. We put up this room within the remaining part of the barn just as a place to have our tanks and store the, uh, the bottles of wine till we can get rebuilt. Visitors to the vineyard spend their time in the tasting room, once a repair room for the farm equipment, and then a garage. The Stearns converted it to this cozy space with a farmhouse feel. It has lots of local touches, too. The wrought iron staircase, the bar top, and the fireplace were built by friends. And the tables were once cow stanchions. The wines themselves are named after local farms, and the labels feature pictures from those farms. From the nine different grapes they grow, the Stearns make five different kinds of wine. So this one is Briar Knoll. That was named after my mother-in-law's farm. This is made with Prairie Star grapes, and it's like a Sauvignon Blanc and hints of pineapple. And the next one is Hilly Land. This is this label is a picture of our farm from 1932, taken up on the side hill. Uh, this is made with Cayuga grapes, and you get grapefruit taste with this one. This one is Clearview. Um, that was my father's farm. I grew up in Woodstock. Um, this is not a picture of my father, but showing that he was a dairy farmer. This is made with Traminette grapes. Uh, this one here, you get a very floral aroma and then citrus flavors. This is Chapman. It was owned by Ethel and Hadley Chapman. This is their homestead from the 1940s. This is made with St. Croix. It is a light red. And this is Ridgedale. This is another farm from up in Woodstock owned by the Richmond family. Um, this is a picture of corn being chopped one row at a time. This picture's from the 1950s. This is made with Marichal Foch grapes and it's oak with chocolate staves. So it's oak staves that we put inside the wine and it has a chocolate essence to it. The wine tasting room is open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays for most of the year, closing around Christmas and reopening in the spring. We're open uh, Fridays from uh, 12 to 9. We have live music on Fridays from 6 to 9. And so we have tastings and sales in there during that time. And then Saturdays and Sundays, we're open from 12 to 6. So there's, seat, there's seating inside the building, and we have tables and chairs set up on the lawn outside. I think I know who's going to Scotland. It would be really nice to go there. Right? Yeah. Mm. Oh, beautiful. All right, Doug and Jerry have six adult children. One of their daughters actually planted some hops on the property this oh. year with the hope that someday soon they'll actually add a craft brewery on the site. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be awesome. The vineyard at Hillyland is located at 75 Murphy Hill Road in the town of Scotland. For more information, head to the vineyard at hillyland.com. And for details on upcoming events like their cruise night in July and their homegrown festival at the end of August, click on the News tab on the website.